Ivan with DIY Detail. Today I'm here to explain to you how to do regular maintenance on your polishers, be it our 25 millimeter dual action or our rotary. I'm gonna start with the dual action, put the rotary to the side for a second. The rotary and the DA both have the same switch, same brushes, same cord. We're gonna show you how to change all of those three. In doing so, We'll have timestamps in the description below, making sure that you know where to go and you don't have to watch the whole video. But if you want to watch the whole video, please do. First thing we need to do is identify if something is wrong with the machine. And normally, something wrong with the machine means that it's not working anymore or it's intermittent. If it's intermittent, meaning you're holding the switch down and you move the cord around, that's probably the cord that needs to be replaced. And to replace the cord, very simple. But to know that it's the cord, do that. Secondly, if you're the type of person that takes your cord, bends it over like this, and then wraps it around the machine, there's a very good chance it is the cord. To change the cord, very simple. First thing we need to do is remove the brush casing. There's a screw on either side. And then from there, you can just pry that up a little bit and set this piece aside. When you're working on your power tools, always make sure that it's unplugged. Next, there's a series of screws that hold the two halves of the handle together. You have two long screws. Let me get that out of there. Not quite. Screw's not cooperating. We'll get that one a little later. And then all the other screws are a shorter screw and they're all the same length. So you don't have to worry about getting them confused and having the wrong screw in the right place. And having a magnetic screwdriver is actually a very good thing here. Once you have all the screws out, separate the two halves of the case like so, and there's that other longer screw. So we have two long screws and the five short screws. Now here, we can see the switch, the cord, speed controller, and the brushes. The brushes, we don't need to go this far to remove them. That'll be a little later in the video. To change the switch, it's as simple as pulling this out, and you have four small Phillips head screws in the switch. You loosen, and once they're loose, you can pull the wires out of the switch, like so. Same on the other one, and there we have it. To replace the cord, it's the same procedure as replacing the switch. The only thing different is now we're gonna release the two screws that hold the clamp on the cord, and now you can change the cord. If your cord is broken just at the beginning here, like most cords, you can actually just shorten your cord and pull it in about a foot, cut it, strip the ends, and you can reinsert into the switch. If not, replace the whole cord if you wish. But most of the time, it is just the first couple inches after the, the grommet here that are the problem. To put this back together, lay your cord back in, leaving about three-eighths, quarter to three-eighths of an inch past the clamp. Then, screw these back in. Now clamp the cord down, holding it. Make sure the strain relief is inside the handle. Once that's locked down, now you can put the switch back in. The switch goes like this. Bring it backwards. The red wire goes closest to the switch. Black wire goes furthest away from the switch. Make sure the screws are tight without stripping them. And 
Again, the white wire closest to you. The black wire furthest away from the switch. And making sure they're well tightened down. That one wasn't. It was tight, but the wire wasn't inserted properly. Just make sure the wire is inserted properly. There we go. Check all your connections and rotate the switch back into its space. And we have in here areas for the wires to go for proper cable management. That way you're not squeezing any wires together when you're putting this back. There's this little square that is here for all the wires to go into, giving you a safe place. for proper wire management. There we have the switch in its place, ready to go. At this point, we can put the handle back on. The two long screws go at this end. Don't need to over tighten the screws, you're just seating them. Once we have the two upper screws and one of the lower screws in place, we can do a test just to make sure that everything we did is correct. Works as it should. Be careful not to put your fingers near the brushes or anything. Unplug the tool and continue the rest of the reassembly. As mentioned before, the most common area of concern is the cord, and that comes from use, obviously, bending and all of that, and wrapping it up too tightly. One way of testing to make sure that the cord is good or not good is with a multimeter. And you can take your multimeter, set it to the ohm setting, Hold one end of it there, the other end on the brush, and hit the switch. And there we have it. We have continuity on this one. Let me uh, show this to the camera here. Holding it in one hand like this, the other one on the brush, squeeze, and we have continuity. That is another way of checking your cord. And if you don't have continuity, then you know the cord is the issue. Like I said, that's most of the issues with, these, with any polisher. Next, you put this back in. There are tabs. Make sure that the tabs are inserted in the right place. And this snaps in. You have the two screws to put back in here and in there. Now, if you're just replacing the brushes, remove the two screws pop off the housing. And now with a small screwdriver, there's this wound up spring here. The wound up spring you want to lift with the screwdriver and just move it to the side. Now the brush is free. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, take the wire clip off and you can lift the brush out. Very important, the wire comes out of the side of the brush, it doesn't come out the top, and there's a channel down the side of the brush holder for this to go down. So you insert it, make sure that the channel is free and the wire is in there, put this back on, and then using your little screwdriver, once again, lift up on the spring, move it into the slot of the brush, and that's all you need to do. 
put the cover back on and you're good. We include a set of replacement brushes and if your machine is intermittent or you hold it a certain way it stops, another way it doesn't, it's either the cord or the brushes. The brushes are an easy thing to check and if it's not the brushes, move, for, move back to the cord. Other than that, we reassemble it and the machine is pretty much maintenance free other than that. Once in a while you may want to take this off and if you have compressed air, blow in there with the machine running and the fan of the machine actually takes it through here and expels the dust out the front end. Don't want to do that above a car that you're going to be polishing, but once in a while it's good maintenance to do, especially if you're using wool pads. Put that in, tighten the screw, two screws down, and you're ready to go polishing again. The other user serviceable parts are the gear case. Once in a while, maybe once a year, you want to change the grease on your machine. To do so, very simple. The Allen key that came with the machine, hold on to the backing plate, loosen it. And this is also, if you're wanting to change from the five to six inch backing plate, this is how you do it. Lift that off, put it to the side. On the side of the casing, you have the two screws holding it on as well. You will want to loosen those and remove them. Once they're removed, this slides forward, put it to the side. Next, we need to remove the gear housing itself. To do so, you'll notice there's four screws down in here. And you'll want to remove one at a time. Lifting it out all the way. Rotate it a half turn. Take the other two screws out. No need to worry, all four screws are the same size. So you don't have to worry about which screw goes where, they're all the same. Then using the plastic housing, we can lift this out. You'll notice in our machines, we have enough grease that it's actually covering the gear from the factory. You don't need to go in and re-grease this as soon as you buy the machine, like some other machines. When you're replacing the grease, you wanna take all this grease out of here. You can use a screwdriver, you can use Q-tips, get it as clean as you can, and then reinsert grease. More grease is not better. You don't want to overfill this grease housing or the gear housing, so just make sure that you're putting roughly about the same amount. From there, to reassemble, very simple. Be sure to have the ventilation holes facing the back of the machine. Insert it back in. And you want to turn this till it lines up using the first screw. And you don't want to tighten the screw, you just want to have it so it's holding everything in place. Rotate the assembly to go to the opposite corner. Just like you're torquing a wheel on a car, you don't want all the torque in one place at one time. And from there, we'll cross over to the other side. And then the last one, again, we're just putting the screw in there. We're not tightening, we're just putting the screw up against its resting place. Then from there, we'll go back to the first one and in a cross pattern, tighten them down. 
They don't need to be overly tight. You are screwing into aluminum. At this point, you can put your backing plate back on. With this machine, we've included a five and six inch backing plate. I'll put the six inch back on. One uh, nice way of doing it is making sure this is in one axis or another, just to make it easier to line this up. The backing plate is keyed to go on there and it's quite a deep recess. So you know that it's there quite easily. Take the hex key, put it back in, tighten it properly. And after about 15 minutes of use, check the tightness once again, and you'll be good to go. This housing slips back on, and the two screws go back in the side. For the rotary, I'll do the same on it. Just give me a second. For those wondering, these are 1100 watt motors on both machines. The speed of rotation is 2500 to 4,500 orbits per minute on the DA. On the rotary, we have 600 to 2,500 RPM. Now, to remove the backing plate, we don't have a button on it, and that's by design. It's actually very simple to do. This is a 25 to one gear reduction, meaning for every rotation here, we have 25 rotations of the pad, and it's 600 RPM. That very high gear reduction makes it so that the spindle basically stays still unless you want to remove it. And to get this off, give it a little hit on the side and it just unscrews. From there, we want to remove the front housing and it's done by one screw here. Set the screw aside. Two Allen screws just like the other dual action machine. One there, one on this side. As always, whenever you're working on a power tool, please make sure that the cord is unplugged for your safety. Now we can separate the housing. We'll put it aside as well. Now you'll notice we have six screws to deal with. Again, all the same length, so no need to worry about positioning. On this machine, you can use from a one inch to a six inch backing plate. Inside the gear housing, lift it up, and you're ready to go. Now you'll notice inside the gear housing, there is two sets of gears. We have a gear that's below here and hidden below the grease. Let me just move some of this grease aside. You can see the bottom gear. And if I turn this, it's turning that gear. And then we have the other helical cut gear on this end, turning the spindle. That's a much higher gear reduction than most polishers on the market. Most polishers on the market are a four to one gear reduction or maybe a six to one. This is 25 to one, meaning 25 rotations of the motor gives you one rotation of the spindle. That gives us much better cooling capacity on the machine. That extra cooling means that you can run it at its lowest speed all day long and it's not gonna overheat on you. From here, the only serviceable item in here, again, is the grease. Once a year, I suggest that you change it or replace it. To put this back together, 
Make sure that the two bearings are aligned. You have a needle bearing there and a needle bearing here. Line them up, put the gear casing back together, and it's a positive interaction. They can't spin. Once this is back together, the six screws, and again, we just want to set the screws in place, but not tighten until we have all six screws in place. Once all six are in place, then we'll cross torque them as well. So not too tight, just tight enough. And going in a star pattern, The casing goes back on. There's a little notch here. You put it in, fold it in. Same on the other side. Put it in, fold it in. Making sure that it's in its place. There we go. Two screws on the side and you'll be ready to polish again. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas about any of the DIY detail line, including our tools, please leave them below. Always happy to answer.